We're back here in Jupyter Notebook, working with a pump and piping system again to do some calculations. So we'll start up here with this cell, import all the stuff that we need, and format that stuff. So we've got our picture of the, uh, uh, the piping system. We'll need to set a bunch of initial values and make sure that we get the actual inside diameter and relative roughness in appropriate units. So I'll run that code now. Having set all of those values, we need to have a pump to work with and a way that we can make some models happen. So previously, we've decided that a TACO TA series model 1548 might be a good choice. And we went to the uh, TACO pump selection site and we were able to find this graph for our input values of 0.1 cubic meters per second at a uh, head of 80.27 meter. Now for the TACO site, we actually had to tell them 1585 US GPM and 263 feet, but it came back saying we would need an impeller just a little bit over 16 inches because here's our operating point and it's just above the 16 inch impeller uh, specification line here for the way that would perform. So what we would do is we'd start with a 17 inch impeller and we'd machine it down to a little bit more than 16 inches and then we'd have the operating point that we specified. Now they've drawn this blue line on here and that blue line was based on the assumption that all of our head requirements were frictional losses. So this line, if we followed it down here, would eventually as a, a parabola intersect with zero somewhere down here. But in fact, about half of our head rise has to go for uh, the 40 meters of elevation change. So the blue line that it should have drawn should have started about here and gone up in a parabola, something like that. So if we want to use this information, we're going to probably have to draw our own blue line. Now, the easiest way to do this, almost always, is to take this curve that you get from the manufacturer, print it out on a piece of paper, and draw some data points on it with a pencil and connect them by freehand to figure out how the system is going to operate. That's what you'll do in almost all situations. Start with a paper copy of this and you can draw your pump curve on there. But in this case, I've gone and digitized this information just to make our lives a little easier. So I went over this whole range here from zero up to 3,200 US gallons per minute in steps of 200 gallons per minute. So zero, 200, 400, 600, 800, and so on. And I said, those are the flow rate data points that I'm gonna take. And I'm going to then find the head data points that correspond to those flow rate data points. So in the first part of this head array, I took all of the data points for the 14.17 inch impeller. In the next one, I took all of the data points for the 15 inch impeller and so on until for this uh, sixth one, number five, I took all of the data points for the 18.7 inch impeller. I read those off and I typed them in and it took me about 15 minutes. Now we'll notice that for the 14.17 inch impeller, it only goes up to about 2200. There is no data point for 2400. So I got some zeros here. So not all of the data points in my array are valid data points. So I went and made another array that noted which, uh, which lines, how many uh, elements in here were valid elements. So the first one here, the zero, it only has 12 valid elements in it. Then 13 in the next one. And finally, for the last one, I have 17 valid elements. So that's just to uh, tell me to not pay attention to these zeros. Now, I also created some other arrays. I created this array, which is just an array of the different impeller diameters going from 14.17 up to 18.7 inches. I created this array, which is a metric version of the flow rate array. And this array is just the same as the uh, USGPM flow rate ar array, except I've multiplied by the number of liters in a gallon, divided by the number of seconds in a minute, and divided by the number of liters in a cubic meter to get it in cubic meters per second. Likewise, down here, uh, I've, I've taken the all of the head values and I've multiplied them by 0 0.3048 to give me a metric version to put the head values in meters. So if I pick that one, I can run that 
and I've put all of that data into the array and I can do something with it. So I'm going to make a plot of it for i in the range from 0 to 6 for all six of these different uh, lines for the different impellers. I'm going to plot the flow against the head and I'm going to go over a range from 0 up to the number of valid points in the array for that particular impeller and I'm going to do this for impeller 0, impeller 1, impeller 2, and so on all the way up and I'm going to give them labels. So let's run that plot. Took a little while to figure it out but here's the plot of the data. So this is the numerical data that I pulled off the original graph and typed in and here's the original graph. So those six curves match up with these six curves. This is in US gallons per minute across the bottom here and feet of head up the side here and it's scaled to match up with the original shape of the graph. So I can use this as a digital version of my pump curve graph if I want to do some stuff in digital calculations and make some comparisons. You would only go through this exercise if you felt that the 15 minutes this took was going to, going to be time that you could save later on because you wanted to make multiple different calculations with this particular pump to see how it would behave in different piping systems. And now we'll go on and figure out how we can put a piping system over top of that and figure out how the curves will interact with each other.